Chapter 9, and Consequences. Past hours have been a blur. Your terrified mom left standing in the kitchen, a story in Lou, and escorting you to the Nexus. Gabriel dragged away, screaming, the holding cell. Now the tribunal chamber is packed with vampires, every silver eye pinned fiercely on you. I heard she revealed herself on purpose, that she killed her own mother. Oh, but it's a public branding. Love the smell of burning flesh. Oh, this is bad. This is really bad. I need a good lawyer. <laughs> uh, Cass. She'd never let a story in Lewin hurt me. She'd beat up everyone in this room if they even tried. Spot Gabriel in the crowd, flanked by two muscled guards who are having a hard time holding him down. He meets your eyes and calls out. Don't worry, Parker. Nothing's going to happen to you. You wish you could believe it. It's even harder when Cass is nowhere to be found. Cass, where are you? You glance up at the dais, where Astoria Lewin and the rest of the Elders are staring at you, as, and it looks could kill. Miss Reese, you stand accused of revealing yourself to multiple humans. Multiple? Lucas, please uh, tell the tribunal what you witnessed tonight. A vampire you know to be a guard enters the room, and the ball settles down as he walks towards the dais and stands facing the crowd. I was patrolling my usual territory, when that one tore past me in full vampire form with a terrified human running in the other direction. Oh god, that must have been Lennox. Combined with Lulin and myself finding you in flagrant vampire in front of your mother. Well, Miss Reese, disappointed doesn't begin to express our feelings on this, but as a member of the Covens, you have a right to explain yourself. So tell us, what do you have to say? I know this looks bad. Looks bad. It is bad. This isn't some minor infraction. This is a crime against the Coven. Yes, but there are mitigating circumstances that... I've heard enough. We made extraordinary exceptions for you, letting you stay in your home, not banishing you for your unauthorized turning. You can't blame her for that. Cass and I turned her. You were told to be quiet, Gabriel. Another outburst and you will be removed from these proceedings. Sorry, and Lou, and take a moment to confer with the elders before turning back to you with their faces grave. You've taken your new identity far too lightly. To ensure you understand the gravity of what you've done, our most severe punishment is in order. Fine, go ahead, brand me, and... Oh no, we are way past branding stage. But the Silver Needle is the punishment for revealing yourself to a human. I'm so glad you remember. But the Silver Neaver, painful as it is, isn't going to cut it this time. Parkaris, it is the judgment of the Tribunal that you will be banished from the Ley Lines for one week. No, you can't do this. Let go of me. This is your final warning, Aldehard. Ugh, she's ugly when she's mad. Banished for a week? I won't make it a day outside the Ley Lines. Perhaps... But it is only after serving your punishment that you will be accepted back into the Covens, unless you wish to argue further. You wouldn't even let me talk. A story of Lewin Elders. I accept the judgment. You lower your head, trying to find a place of calm within you as you imagine what you're about to face. I understand the gravity of what I've done, and as a member of the Covens, I'm willing to face the consequences. For what it's worth, I do hope you survive. Gods, take her to the... Not so fast. The door slams open as Cass storms in the tribunal chamber. The stormy look on her face turns to a smirk when she spots you. Hey, new girl. Miss me? Cassie Harlow. Damn right. Hate to break up your little vampy party, but there's no way I'm letting you kick Parker to the curb. Parker is a vampire, subject to our laws, and as are you. So unless you wish to be banished alongside her, I accept. Excuse me. Me too, if Parker goes, then I go. 
With a mighty heave, Gabriel pushes off his guards. Together, he and Cass come to your side, facing down the vampire elders. Guys, no. I'm not going to let you sacrifice yourselves for my mistake. Your mistakes are our mistakes. And everybody's got to make a few mistakes, sometimes. Builds character. Do I understand this correctly? You're choosing this fledgling, this lawbreaker, over your vampire family. It's an affront! That hat is an affront. This is a choice and I choose Parker always. I won't allow it. You assigned us as Parker's mentors, which by common law makes us responsible for her. So if she's guilty, then so are we. That's... Whoops. Got you there, huh, Lewin? If you want to go up in flames, I won't stop you. All three of you. Uh, to the ley lines. I want them out of my sight now. Twenty minutes later, a representative from each coven drops you just outside the ley line. We'll see you in a week. If all goes well. If you try to return before then, we will know. There'll be consequences. And they're gone in a blink of an eye. Gabriel and Cass move closer to you. Together, the three of you turn your backs on the safety of Crimson Beach. We haven't even talked about her mother. Seriously, how are we going to deal with that? Here goes nothing. We still have several hours until daybreak. Gives us plenty of time to find a place to bunker down. That is the three of you trapeze through the underbrush. Your mind is stuck on a few last hours. A leaden feeling weighing you down. I ruined everything. Everything. How did I screw up so bad? I revealed myself to Lennox, Mom. Mom. The look on her face. She was terrified of me. Your breath catches in a sob, and Gabriel and Cass spin towards you in alarm. Parker, what's... How could I blow my cover to two humans? Crumble to your knees as your grief overwhelms you. I put you all at risk. Well, because I couldn't control my emotions, I attack my own mother. I deserve whatever happens to me on her. The next thing you know, Gabriel has fallen to his knees in front of you and pulled you into a fierce hug. Don't say that. It was an accident. None of that was real you. You were there. You saw what I did. You saw my mom. She'll never forgive me. You hear a sigh and then Cass crouches behind Gabriel, lifting your chin to meet her eyes. Hey, remember when Golden Boy attacked you during the Autumn Festival? You forgave him, didn't you? Yeah, but your mom knows the real you. When you get back in a week, all she'll care about is whether you're okay. Guys, I... Hmm. Swear I'm going to fix this. Don't deserve you at all. I don't deserve you at all. We're all gonna die. Sun poisoning, wild animals, whatever killed the Envoy. Something's gonna get us, and that's gonna be all my fault. Nobody's dying. Not on my watch. We just have to make it through the week. And hey, we've already survived in the wild. It'll be a piece of cake a second time. You extricate yourself from them, and only further your heart to pang anew at the earnestness on both of their faces. You shouldn't have come. You don't deserve to suffer from sun poisoning again, especially when you didn't do anything wrong. Parker... I wasn't just making it up when I said we're responsible to. We're your mentors and we should have done a better job. Our mission now is to protect you from sun poisoning. And speaking of, the sun's going to be up sooner than we want. We better find that shelter. You can't help gaining some confidence from them and find yourself nodding in determination. Right. We've got this together. You rise to your feet and continue your journey in the woods, but more grateful than you can express that you don't have to do this alone. You haven't walked for too long when Gabriel huffs out a laugh and you and Cass give him a look of confusion. Is there some joke we aren't in on? Oh, I was just thinking, maybe it was, uh, it won't be too bad out here. We're going to get exercise, hike some wilderness we don't normally get to see. He steps a little closer to you, the backs of his fingers brushing against yours. There's so much I'd like to show you. The moon reflecting off a gorgeous lake while owls hoot in the trees. That sounds so peaceful. And romantic. Great. I'll make sure these seven days will feel like a vacation. I promise. Okay, Smokey Bear. Maybe save the pep talks for day five when we actually need them. Look at it this way, Cass. 
we won't see Astoria or Lewin for all seven whole days. Now that's an idea I can get on board with. I'm gonna like not having to answer those two fossils every time I want to have a little fun. She shoots you a smirk full of promise and your stomach flips. I already thought of some fun things you and I can do together, new girl. Mm, why do I get the feeling those things involve danger? And why is that so exciting? Because nothing spells fun like a good adrenaline rush. I guess I'm looking forward to spending t more time with you. You're talking to me, right? Uh, well... Oh, sorry, Cass. I guess that makes you the third wheel. Come on, guys. You know what I mean. I think having a week with just the two of you could be nice. They trade glowers with each other, then their eyes are on you, and their heart your heart skips a beat at the intensity of their gazes. A week with you is, is what would be nice. But you know how I feel about sharing. As they both squabble around ground rules for their way together, your mind starts to wander. Maybe we could make it work, the three of us out on our own without a story and Lewin and all those stupid coven rules. Maybe, sometime during this immortal life, we could really make a life for ourselves, just me, Gabriel, and Cass. Indulge in a daydream, diamond choice. Imagine the possibilities, and don't worry, it'll put you at ease. Don't have me, leave me alone. Hey, have you ever thought about what it would actually be like if we really left Crimson Beach for, like, forever, not just a week? Look, a surprise passes between both of them. Interesting idea, but one problem. Where would we even live? Not a lot of options if you don't want to end up charred. How about a new town? One with ley lines and a coven. We could infiltrate them. And find some place in the woods. Totally isolated. Sleep during the day. Come out during the night to hunt. Real old school vampire stuff. I think I'd enjoy the rustic life. You can picture it, living in some cute little cabin deep in the woods, you, Gabriel, and Cass walking out on the front porch just as the sun sets. Gotta admit, the sunset here is beautiful. Anyone up for a run through the woods? I'm feeling the need for speed. I don't know, it's been raining for two days. I don't want to get my shoes all muddy. How about we just relax on the porch for a while? Are you worried about mud on your shoes? Let's vote on it. Money run through the woods or picnic on the porch. 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 Damn it, I hate democracy. Okay, fine. But I'm getting a rocking chair. Rock golden boy. You're turning into a grandma. Sound of Gabriel and Cass's bickering voices snap you back to the present. Look, the real question is how would we feed? We'd have to be some place near a ley line town, some place with a hospital. Or we could just hunt vampires, or humans, like, you know, vampires? I'm not doing that, Cass. Come on, new girl, break the tie. A nice invigorating hunt for warm, fresh blood, or room temperature microplastic red goo. You think it over a minute, weighing the pros and cons. Mmm. Hunting. If it's just the three of us, a couple of missing hikers wouldn't attract a lot of attention. Parker! See? Only turned a few weeks ago and already she's a vamp, then more vamp than you, golden boy. Ah, that's her choice, I respect it, but I'll stick with the red goo, thanks. Don't worry, Aldahar, we'll bring you back the leftovers. You tune the two of them out and imagine how exhilarating a real hunt in the woods with Cass would be. The forest blurs around you as you skid to a stop, lean against a tree, panting. Hunts been hard, but you've almost got your prey cornered. Suddenly you blink, Cass is at your side. Mm, you pick up the trail again? Close your eyes, lifting your face to the wind, and breathe deeply. The sense of the forest wash over you, trees, moss, deer, and then... Got him. About a hundred feet that way. Damn, that's specific. You're getting good at this. Mm, learn from the best. Now let's go. Smiling, well, you shake your head to dispel the fantasy, find the two of them still going at him. 
All I'm saying is, how are we supposed to live together like one big happy family if we can't agree on where to live or how to eat? It's called compromise. It's called ripping each other's heads off. Gabriel glances at you, a sheepish expression on his face. I don't know about you, but I'm willing to make any compromises if it means Parker doesn't have to get, pick up uh, the pieces. Literally. I don't know. It's kind of fun watching you two argue. Sorry, did you say fun? Oh, sure I did. I mean, sometimes it's annoying, but when you guys are at the top of your game, it's practically a spectator sport. Weird sense of humor you got there. Luke is talking. She's got a point, though. You guys work best as a team when you're under threat. And if we're going to live as exiles for real, and we'll be under threat every second of every day. That is true. Cass thinks about it a moment, then grudgingly says, I will admit, but only this one time, and only because you better never repeat it, you do make a pretty good wingman, golden boy. And there's no one I'd rather go into battle with than you, okay, Cassie Harlow. Whoa, did I just give you the green light to use my government name? Oh, look at you guys. All friendly and stuff really just warms my heart. Anything to make you happy, Parker. Oh my god, you are shameless. What, are you saying you wouldn't do anything to make her happy? Of course I would, but as they dissolve into yet another argument, you wonder. Would I be happy if we lived together? Always having to play referees, the two of them bicker. Their voices fade away for a moment as you lose yourself in another fantasy. What would it be like with all of us together? All of us? Just Gabriel, Cass, all of us together. We'd be in a cute little beach house on the ocean, close to a ley line town so Gabriel can stay connected to his human side. But isolated enough that Cass never feels the need to hide her vampire nature. Parker, Cass, I'm back. Then Cass look up from your seats in the sand in front of a moon-dappled ocean in time to see Gabriel climbing down from the bluff. Your heart lifts with joy and you run to him shaking your arms around his neck and pulling him in for a warm, tender kiss. Mm, best welcome home ever. There's more where that came from, handsome. Come on. You link your arms with his and lead him back to the blanket where you flop down next to Cass. He settles behind you and you nestle back against him. That was down. More importantly, did you remember the tacos? With a side of guac, and I got a few blood bags from the hospital for later. Hard pass. Yes, you haven't hunted in days. Cause every time I come home smell like fresh blood, Golden Boy gives me the stink eye. You can't kill our neighbors. You say neighbors, I say dinner. Labels are so reductive, don't you think? Okay, okay. Everybody chill. Uh, let's put this debate inside. Just uh, have a nice quiet picnic on the beach. But first... With a teasing grin, you rise and pull Cass up with you. Then slide a hand around her neck and capture her lips with a sudden scorching kiss. Skinny dip time? Mmm, definitely skinny dip time. You whip off your shirt and snap it playfully against her side. Hey! Mm, last one in, cleans the house for a week. You turn and sprint toward the water. Cass follows laughing as Gabriel calls out from behind. Don't have too much fun without me. Hey, new girl, where's your head at? The question breaks you out of your reverie, and you shake your head, come back into the present. Uh, sorry, just thinking about stuff. Mm, must have been good stuff. Yeah, you were grinning like you won the lottery. You saw that cast, then Gabriel, feeling the heat rise in your cheeks as you remember your skinny-dipping ocean fantasy. If they only knew. 
We should pick up the pace. We got a lot of ground to cover before the sun comes up. Good point. Let's go. As you venture deeper into the woods, you smile, realizing that letting your imagination run wild has lightened everyone's mood. I know it's just a fantasy, but who knows what could happen in the future. Sometime later, you put several miles between yourself and Crimson Beach, but it doesn't feel like enough distance from the events of the day. Guys, it's almost dawn. Should we pick a cave or something? We could, but I'm fine to keep going if you are. Put a few more miles between us and home. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Let's keep going. But, only a couple hours into the morning light, Gabriel nudges you and mutters in your ear. Hey, something's up with Cass. Nods towards her, who should have been able to overhear him, except she's oblivious to your stares, plodding heavily through the brush. Look at her hand. Your gaze drops, and you realize that Cass is flexing her fingers and rubbing at her hand, the other hand she injured during your first hunting lesson. Cass, hasn't your hand healed yet? You rage for her, but you're not quick enough. She dances away, hiding her hand behind her back. What are you talking about? My hand's fine. But Gabriel is quicker. In a flash, she's behind Cass, fingers clamped around her wrist. He, she struggles, but his grip only tightens. What the hell are you doing, Aldhar? Hey. Cass, hold still. We're trying to help you. This is helping? He's breaking my wrist. It wouldn't hurt if you weren't twisting around so much. Back off. Cass manages to break his hold and shove him away, but the effort costs her. She staggers alarmingly. Cass! But the next second, she's found her footing, fist clenched, and knees bent, ready to pounce. Mind your damn business, Golden Boy, or I'm gonna have to start throwing hands. I don't want to fight you, Cass. I just want to make sure you're okay. They're both sweating and panting. That's when you notice the first pricklings of sun poisoning yourself. The sun's rising too high for us to keep going. Moon Shroud, thank goodness for this. You breathe a sigh of relief as your body cools down, but Gabriel and Cass aren't as lucky. Postures flagging as they continue facing off. Stop being so cagey. Stop getting all in my business. Both of you, stop. Or we all die of sun poisoning. Or rather, before you die, because I'm the only one here with magical ley line power to protection. They deflate a little, and you shut your eyes, reaching for your guidance ability deep within you. Hmm, guidance ability. Show me to shelter. You've never been happier to feel the tug inside of you, and you point deeper in the trees. Come on, it's telling me there's something this way. You lead them deeper in the part of the forest to a nearby river, and you all take a moment to cool down in the water as you look around. Hey, there's a cave behind those, uh, those bushes. Gabriel pulls away the screen of brambles, and you all step inside. Immediately, the darkness of the cave soothes the creeping burn of the sun. Ugh, this place is a lot bigger than it looks on the outside. Maybe we should... I'm sitting here and relaxing. You can go do your spelunking on your own. Okay, maybe I could should go investigate. Make sure we're safe. I'll... Eh, yeah, I'm gonna sit down and explore with their chills cast. Call if you find anything, Gabriel. And be careful. You settle with Cass near the entrance to the cave as she swipes sweat from her brow. Seriously, Cass, are you okay? You really don't look good. Gee, thanks! You know what I mean. Look, I appreciate what you're doing, but taking care of myself is kind of my thing. Hey guys, I found something. You're gonna want to see this. They, you're instantly on alert. You and Cass follow the sound of Gabriel's voice to where he's crouched down looking at something in the dirt. Are those footprints? Well, that's more than a little creepy. And look, they go back even further. We don't hear or sense anything living back there, though. I'm positive we're alone in the cave. So, should we check out where the footprints go? I vote yes. Maybe whoever was uh, here left something that'll be useful to us. Or the cave with Gabe and Cass. Diamond choice. Me, we, 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 we. Follow the footprints, guy.
I've done a little spelunking, so I'll either way, but since we have no idea where we're walking into here, we need to be careful and stay together. Fine, but no way I'm holding your hand. Water laps at your ankles as the tunnel grows darker, narrower, but your heightened vampire sight helps you see the faith footprints. It uh, opens back up just ahead. Soon, the tunnel winds out into a larger space. You take in the ashes of an old fire pit lying next to it, a rusty oil lamp. It looks like a campsite. Is someone living here? Gabriel crouches beside the fire pit and touches the pile of logs that crumble beneath his fingers. No, there hasn't been a fire in this pit for a while now. Cass bends down next to him and picks up the oil lamp, careful to keep the rust from staining her clothes. And this isn't something you can pick up from the Home Depot. My guess is nobody's been here for years. Maybe centuries? See those shoes? What's that? They're in the corner. An old book. Whose was this? You kneel down, extracting a leather book, half buried beneath a layer of dirt. The penmanship inside is florid and scratchy like it was written with a quill. This looks like a diary. It belongs to Esme Taylor, and the first entry is from September 1823. Hmm, 1823 is in line with the old oil lamp. This uh, has to be Esme's campfire. What the hell does some 200-year-old lady's diary end up all the way out here? Let's find out. After a journey of many days, I arrived at my new home. It is so bright and cheerful. I was sad to leave my family, but I believe I will be happy here in the town of Crimson Beach. Now playing as Asma, October 5th, 1823. I am in such a fluster. I attended the town's traditional autumn festival celebration tonight, and I dance with a lovely gentleman named Mr. Louis Grenville. He is so different from the other men, almost luminous, with a shy smile and a gentle way. Miss Taylor, I, I do not frequent town much, but I must... It must be providence that I come to tonight's celebration for meeting you and... Oh, yes? Uh, forgive me, I, I am not usually so forward with my affections, but would you do me the honor of allowing me to call on you again? Perhaps uh, tomorrow night? I would like that very much, Mr. Grenville. Very much indeed. Oh, I, I am delighted to hear that. Now, playing as Barker, you look up from the book and shake your head. I feel like... We're witnessing the start of an epic romance. Yeah, it sure sounds like a 19th century meet-cute. You catch Gabriel's eye and share a smile, pleased to see he's just as invested as you are, but the moment's interrupted by a yawn. Boring. Do you have any heart at all? Ass thumps a fist against her chest and smirks. Oh, empty like a decorative holiday gourd. Now get back to reading, new girl. I gotta know how this ends. You turn back to the book, running a finger down the page to find the place you left off. It looks like the next three entries, or next entry picks up about three weeks later. Now, playing as Asma, October 30th, 1823. Mr. Grenville and I have been walking out every night. I do believe that the townsfolk have begun to talk, and but I do not care, for my heart is so full. And tonight we will meet here in my home, as uh, Louis w wishes to speak to me in private. He says it is something of great importance. I do believe he means to propose. My dear, these, these last few weeks have brought me the greatest happiness of my life, but... Louis, what is it? You look stricken. Miss Taylor, I, I wish to spend my life with you, but... Oh, Mr. Greenville, yes, a hundred times. But before you agree, there's something I must tell you. My love is you. As you know, I live far outside town. That is because... Because I am a vampire. I am overwhelmed. A vampire? How could such a thing exist in a small town like Crimson Beach? And there are others. He calls his brethren a coven, and they live in a place called... The Nexus. He tells me consorting with humans is against the rules of his people. If we marry, we must keep our love hidden. But though everything stands against us, I know that I cannot give him up. 
Alurus, I, I don't care what you are. I want to be with you. Oh, my love. Our lives will not be easy. Oh, do not poet the Virgil right that love conquers all. I love you, Lewis, and with all my heart. And I will love live my life with you no matter the circumstances. We married in secret the next week, and though our time together is limited, we are so happy. So, so happy. June 10th, 1828. It has been years since I felt compelled to write in this diary, but now tragedy has struck. The doctor has been by, and the news is not good. What I believe is a minor illness is, in fact, the wasting illness sickness. I am not long for this world. I have lived a life filled with much joy. My only regret is leaving my dear Lewis. I'm so sorry, my love, but you must be strong for me. No, I, I refuse to accept it. Let me please relent. Allow me to turn you into a vampire. I, I cannot let you go, no. Not, not so soon, not at all. Uh, but the coven, the rules. Damn the rules. I want to spend eternity with you. Now, playing as Parker. Wait, I remember this from the Chambers of Law. You're right. The story depicted in the mural. He turned her without the permission, and then they were banished by the coven. Damn. What are the odds we'd come across her diary? They must have up ended up here. Is there anything else about the... After they were banished? Flip through the pages and find the entry written in a hurried hand as Esme describes the hardships of living outside the ley lines your heart begins to break. Now playing as Esme. As the sun sets below the horizon, you and Lewis cautiously open the doors of your rickety cabin and step out into the night. Lewis, I'm so hungry. We haven't fed in days. Lewis takes you in his arms and presses his lips softly to your forehead. Uh, let us go hunting again. It's only twilight. There may still be travelers on the road. But without the resources of a coven, prey is hard to find. And dawn finds you returning home, the rapacious hunger still clawing at your throat. You emerge from the woods. You find men tearing your things from the cabin. He pulls you away and you huddle behind a tree. The fire's still warm. This has to be where they're hiding. Lucas, who are they? And they are they your crying crossbows? They're vampire hunters. An evil lot bent on wiping out our kind from the face of the earth. They want to kill us. We have to flee. You and Lewis dart through the trees, desperate to find distance between yourselves and the hunters. But, when you reach the river, you find... Here! They're here! Get your arms! Leave us be! The snarl, you launch yourself into the hunter, tackling him to the ground. And for a moment, your hunger gets the better of you. Your fangs descend into his neck, but before you can drink, Lewis pulls you away. There's no time. The others are coming. We must run! With a burst of vampire speed, you and Lewis escape. This Deadly bolts fly around you, fleeing the only peace you've known for months. We ran for days, pursued by the hunters, but our superior speed allowed us to escape. Eventually we came upon this gr grotto and have settled here. As I write, Lewis covers the entrance with a screen of brambles. For the moment we are safe, but the threat of discovery by the hunters is ever present in our minds. We have made camp deep inside the cave, trusting ourselves to the darkness. Lewis's stalwart constantly reassures me we are free of them, but I fear our time here will be short. I fear for our lives. They probably died in the cave. You close the book and sit back, your heart pounding from the palpable fear in Esme's ominous final words. That's the last entry. Do you think they escaped? I mean, there's nothing else here. Maybe they settled deeper in the cave. There's another tunnel leading out the here. You follow the tunnel back further, eventually coming to a large, dark space. Your eyes strain in the abrasive darkness before they land on a heart-rending side of two skeletons huddled together, crossbow bolts embedded in their ribs. Together to the end. You all stand silent for a moment, 
bear witness to the tragic end of Esme and Lewis's tale. Can't believe they didn't make it. The hunters back then were ruthless. Trapped back here without a coven to protect them, they just... They never stood a chance. I know we talked about living on our own, but after this, I'm not sure it's realistic to think we can survive outside the covens. Come on, this happened like 200 years ago. It's not like we're being chased by a bunch of hunters. You may want to knock on some wood here in a minute. Besides, even if we were being pursued by whatever, it's not like the three of us together can't take them on. You can't help but notice the strain in Cass's voice. And when you turn to Gabriel, your heart gives a little thump to see the doubt in his eyes. You twist your bracelet nervously around your wrist, then press Cass and Gabriel's dangling charms between your fingers, taking comfort in the steady beat of their hearts. If we were cornered like this, they'd both fight to the death to protect me. And if I lost them, I don't think I could survive that. Should we, I don't know, bury them or something? It, it feels wrong, leaving them out in the open like this. No. This is where they fell. It seems disrespectful to move them now. You kneel down and solemnly lay the diary on the bodies of the doomed lovers. Rest well, Esme and Lewis. You navigate back through the tunnels, your thoughts still haunted by the tragic fate of the vampires you left behind. Late afternoon finds you all sitting at the cave entrance, waiting for sunset. Cass absently rubs at her injured hand. Cass, how's the hand doing? Great, thanks for asking. Now stop. She stomps to a far corner of the grotto and your heart twinges with hurt. Gabriel lays a hand on your back. Hey, don't take it personally. You've offered your concern. If she won't accept it, that's on her. It's just... Why isn't her wound healing? I have no idea. I've never seen a vampire wound that didn't heal immediately, much less days later. How about you two quit talking about me behind my back? Suddenly, her, your heads all snap towards the mouth of the cave as you pick up the distant chatter of voices. Not too long, no. Is this just me, or did that sound like one of the Forest Bureau guys? It's not just you. It sounded like the one who offered to clean Cass's cut. Jones or something. What are they doing out here? We're nowhere near Crimson Beach or the fire. Nowhere near anything. Cass rejoins you at the entrance, muscles tightening with intent. I don't like this. Something feels wrong. We should track them down, find out where they're going. But sunset isn't f for another a couple of hours. They'll be long gone by then. We're vampires. We're born to hunt humans. Just consider it a test of whatever you've been learning. As soon as it's dark, the three of you emerge from the cave. Thinking of Cass's advice, you take a breath to focus your senses. Hmm. Scent for blood? Mm, that would be if they're injured, so listen for a heartbeat. Close your eyes, concentrating your vampire hearing to filter out the sounds of the forest and listen for... Uh, heartbeats coming from that way. You all set off into the trees, picking your way through the deep brambles of the trail, those distant heartbeats. But all too soon, it fades. Damn it. Do a quick recon. See if I can pick up the trail again. Stay here. Cass disappears in a blur of motion. You turn to Gabriel with a frustrated growl. Maybe this isn't worth it. It's not like it's any of our business. What? But at the corner of your eye, you see a faint sparkle of color radiating from the underbrush. Um, was I in the sun or too long, or can you see that too? See what? You inch towards the spot, and you... As you draw closer, that misty light that heralds a new ability blurs your vision like a rainbow filtering through a prison. Startled, you look at Gabriel and you see a faint aura of red wavering around him, fading to greens and blues. What is it? Is there something on me? No, yes. I, I, I think it's some kind of heat signature. Everything alive around me is radiating color. Then you feel a familiar tug. You know that as you... If you accept this power, you'll be able to track the Mim with from the Forest Forest Bureau. Focus on the colors around. Unlock your heat signature ability to track your prey. Listen, there is there an ability in there that allows me to close my eyes while simultaneously reading to all of you? Cause man, oh, 
my eyes are killing me right now. The things I do because I love all of you. Alright, so there's our new ability. Two more to go, I assume? You close your eyes and tip your head back, allowing the power to flow into you in a rush of heat and color. And you open your eyes again. Every living thing in the forest is glowing in wild shades of blue, green, and red. None of that is reflected on the screen as Holy Mother of Blindness. Oh my god, it's amazing. No, it's not. Like, l everything's radiating color. Yep, suddenly cast bursts through the trees and slides to a halt in front of you. Uh, what's up? You guys looking around like you got knocked on the head. Parker can see heat signatures now. Okay, maybe we should get you back in the cave before the sun can come up and fry your brain even more. Uh, it's a new ability, Cass. Like, over there is a big spot of color all red and glowing, and you guys are glowing too. I want to tease them. Ugh, except this page is just inverted white blindness. <laughs> what do I look like? Besides a nerd? Most of you is yellow and orange, but your face is radiating the amazing red. You brush your hand on Gabriel's cheek and watch the color shift to intensity of flames. And now it looks like you're on a fire. I... you... hang on! What's the matter, golden boy? Embarrassed? And what about you, Cass? You run your hand down her arm, thrilled to see her entire body bloom just as hot as Gabriel's. Hmm, you're even brighter red. He steps back, pressing a hand to one of her heated cheeks. I don't like this game. Come on, let's get back to business, new girl. Can that help with the tracking? Because I smell something that way, but it kept fading in and out. You follow the direction Cass is pointing and concentrate on fluctuating colors radiating from the forest. Then, I see a handprint on that tree trunk over there. As you head towards the tree, Cass leans into the wind and scents the air. You sure the scent is completely muddled? You keep walking, quickly a spot a glow of red in the shape of a footprint, then another. Positive, they went this way. Can't argue with that confidence. You press silently through the thick brambles, following the red-blue glow of human footprints, rabbit bolts, rabbit's bolt, and furious red streaks through the underbrush, crimson birds flit through the branches. What are you seeing now? The physical footprints are long gone. It's all light, color. It's amazing. Hate to break up the Nature Lovers Club, but we got a little weirdness coming up in the clearing here. You peer through the screen of a low hanging branches and make out the corner of an imposing concrete building. Why would the Forest Bureau build a giant cinder block bunker this far out in the woods? Parker, what do you see with the heat vision? Good luck, because it's concrete. You concentrate, and suddenly the entire building lights up in a blaze of color. Flow of glowing humans, outlines walking around. It's full of people. Lots of them. Then let's steer clear and check out some of these other buildings. You creep back into the trees and circle around to another of the formidable concrete structures, but when you try the door, it's locked tight. Those forest freaks are hiding something. The question is what? There's gonna be another way in. Come on, let's try the roof. You leap to the roof, landing with cat-like stealth, and you grin at what you find. A skylight. Perfect. You make sure the coast is clear, but then one by one you drop down into the bunker. You find yourself in an echoey warehouse, surrounded by stack after stack of crates. Let's see if we can get uh, one of these things open. You try several until you land on one that isn't nailed shut, but when you pull back the lid, you recoil at the contents. Tell me I'm seeing things. I wish I could, but these are definitely talismans. Hundreds of them, at least. Thousands if the rest of these crates are filled with the same thing. But why would the Forest Bureau have them? Suddenly you hear voices approaching. The key slides into a lock and the doorknob turns. 
Wake back to the roof. You leap for the roof, pull yourselves up, just as three figures enter the room and flip on the lights. McKay. Oh, here's where uh, we keep the gear. We've been making good progress on the production side. It's one of Lennox's men, but what the hell are they wearing? <laughs> I was going to say something else, but we'll just go with it. Mmm. He's got bullets on his holster. Look like combat gear. Question is, what would they need to fight? Guys in the lab just developed a whole new line of weapons. You watch silently as the man you recognize as McKee pulls open several of the crates. They may look small, but they're deadly. One push of the batch and they inject a line of silver directly into the bloodstream. You'd have to get close to the target for that to work. Seems a little dangerous, don't you think? McKee pulls a handful of talismans from another crate and holds them out. Even from the roof, you can see his eerie smile. That's why you hit him with this bad boy first. Sprays him with tiny silver particles. They inhale it. Drops him immediately. And the ones in this box, they emit a laser field similar to sunlight. Fries their skin like bacon. I see the writers of Pixelberry literally and figuratively sat down and watched Blade. It was like Blade 1 through 2, I believe. I, could, I think it was more focused on Blade 2, but I could be wrong. Is he saying what I think? Impressive. I can't wait to see them in action. Ah, oh, the wait's almost over. The big man just confirmed that Crimson Beach is the nesting ground for a coven we've been searching for. No. In a couple of days, this monster's gonna be toast. McGee's voice trickles up to you as you look in horror at Gabriel and Cash, your expression mirrored on both of their faces. The Forest Bureau is a cover. These guys are vampire hunters. And they're gonna use those talismans to eradicate the Crimson Beach Covens. Oh no, what a shock. Hey, you know, I'm glad it took you guys... Five chapters, give or take. I, I was sussing these guys from the minute we literally started chapter one. Two kind of confirmed about an 80% chance, and three just sealed all the nails in the coffin. But without further ado, thank you all for watching. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Head down, there is the thanks and join feature that is on the channel, and many things to uh, go to the description to check out. Um, I do apologize about being late on this video. I know, I know. Um, unfortunately, I feel like I feel like I fail you guys. I really do. Um, health happens though. I just, I have no excuses, really. Uh, like I said, my eyes are just super irritated right now. Um, and I don't know what I'm fighting off right now, but just super irritated. Like, right now I just want to close my eyes and kind of like stay in bed, and I've already done enough of that, so. And I know you guys want, um, content, so, um, thank you for understanding, if you are understanding. Otherwise, again, I can uh, I'm only going to apologize once and say, hey, man, I'm a I'm human being, right? Um, I wish I was a vampire sometimes. Hell, I wish I was anything but human. But, uh, yeah, no, unfortunately, I'm just uh, flesh and blo blood, man. I'm a, I'm a meat sack. <laughs> if any of you are vampires and would like to turn me, that'd be great. Anyway, um, aside from that, uh, once again, thanks for watching. Let me know what you thought in the comment section below. Something tells me I'll just give you guys cliff notes. This is what I think will happen. Um, one of two things. We'll either try and get some proof, right? And we'll take it back to the coven of the story of Lewin, or we'll be like, oh, the convenient time, Miss Parker. Um, and do some stupid shit like that. Or, um, you know, we'll, we'll start heading back and they'll, you know, We'll know when you come back in the forest. And then the story and Lewin and the coven and everybody else will be pissed off. We'll be like, listen, here's what's going on. And then everyone will be like, well, they were right in book one. Um, I, I, I'm also just going to say this. You know, I, I, you know, extenuating circumstances in for the book, right? We were going to stand there and tell everybody and everybody's like, shut up. You don't have a right to talk. Even though everybody's like, well, you belong in two caverns. Go ahead and talk. It, it's just weird. It's just, it's just really weird. And then also, did they not handle Linux? Did they let him run away? And they're like, oh no, he's escaped outside the light lines. There's nothing we can do. Oh no, everyone knows of us now. Like, what, 
that seems so... It's just a giant plot hole for me. And I don't like plot holes in writing, right? And then there will be plot armor for our people. And it, it just doesn't... I don't like bad writing. I just... I, I'm allergic to it. I start breaking out in hives and letting obscenities and whatnot come out of my mouth because then I start getting agitated. <laughs> but anyway, once again, thanks for watching. Catch you all later. Peace out.